Hey guys, what's up? Missed me? Nah, of course not. It's all good. Okay, so today we're taking a closer look at the Logs G T20 tech and headphone arm combo. But before we do that, let's see what comes inside the box. Let's unbox it first, of course. Okay. So we have a, an user manual, the DAC itself. I have the blue one. The Logs G is having it in two versions. A red one and the blue one. I have the blue one. It also comes with a remote control right here. Very nifty thing. I like it uh, quite a lot. Very interesting. A power cable, a simple power cable and then a USB cable. And this is basically it. Everything comes inside the package. Let's put it outside and let's do the review. Okay guys, so let's talk about design and build quality first. Uh, design wise I think D20 looks uh, pretty standard and uh, doesn't stand out ap apart from its colorful case. Uh, it's quite small as you can see and can be integrated into tiny spaces and small offices. Uh, the case is full aluminium CNC1 at about 2 mm thickness uh, is the case and uh, it should block outside noise pretty easily. Uh, it looks pretty well put together and uh, with quite impressive tolerance numbers. On the bottom there are four rubber feet as you can see uh, that will absorb uh, micro vibrations. The front panel is covered in glass and houses a small OLED screen right here. Uh, that will display important information as the selected input, uh, the bitrate, the selected volume level. On the left there is a standard uh, 6.5 mm or quarter inch headphone output and on the right there is a digital volume knob. The volume wheel is quite interesting as uh, is pressing it shortly will reveal a nice menu on the OLED screen. Uh, where you can select the desired digital input, I mean the USB, the optical and the coaxial. The desired uh, output, uh, the headphone output or the clean line out. Uh, your filter settings and a simple but very effective uh, equalizer and the display brightness. The most important settings from the menu in my opinion are the filter settings and the equalizer settings. They are offering uh, six positions for the filter settings. The sharp roll off, the slow roll off, short delay sharp, short delay slow, super slow and short delay. Uh, I tested them all and I think there is a small difference between them and I like the super slow filter the most. I think that one is the most uh, natural sounding and the most faster and basically the most detailed uh, uh, filter settings in my opinion. The fourth setting in the menu that is called uh, simply sound, uh, it's a bit tricky because uh, that's actually the equalizer and it has uh, four positions, uh, default, current max, current mid and current uh, minimum. But after playing with them I discovered that it's uh, basically a simple equalizer and uh, C max will enhance your treble, C mid will enhance your mid range and C low will enhance your bass response. Uh, the difference is not that big, mind you, but uh, most of the time I have listened on the default position. I think that one sounds the best and uh, with clearer definition of the notes. All these settings can be controlled by the remote control, but uh, I recommend checking the manual first because not all the buttons have a function and are not working all of them. Okay, let's see at the back of the device. Uh, as you can see, it has an AC inlet and a USB type B an uh, optical input, a coaxial input and a line out, uh, clean a li line out for your speakers, for your amplifiers, for your headphone amplifiers, uh, integrated amps and so on. Uh, okay, so let's uh, talk a bit about the tech specs a bit. Um, the cool thing about this device, about uh, D20, it's, uh, it's using a flagship AKM chip. Is the 4497EQ DAC chip um, that is part of the Verita Velvet sound architecture. Uh, most of the time uh, this DAC chip can be found in um, very expensive audio devices ranging from DAPs to high-end DACs. Uh, D20 can be had uh, for less than uh, 300 US dollars and I think uh, that's really impressive because it houses the most advanced DAC chip from uh, AKM. 
Day 20 is also using a multi-transistor current uh, amplifier uh, circuit and can be considered a discrete design working in class AB for a low distortion and high current output on both the ERCA out and the headphone out. Um, D20 is also using a medical grade uh, toroidal transformer inside, so it's really good news since clean power needs uh, a clean power supply. Uh, headphone amplifier is quite modest this time around, it uh, offers only 220 milliwatts of power in, in uh, 32 ohms. That's more than decent for a portable device, but uh, not a lot uh, for a desktop solution. Its headphone out has 40 digital positions, but uh, doesn't offer a uh, gain switch. For my IEMs, volume-wise I am somewhere between 8 and 15. And we, uh, with my full-size headphones I am about uh, 30 to 35, I think. And sometimes even maxed out uh, on few high dynamic range tracks. You should know about uh, that the headphone out is, um, was put there mainly for convenience and will not outperform a dedicated headphone amp. It gets the job done but, uh, and sounds pretty good with dynamic headphones but, uh, and quite decent with planar magnetics but not really impressive. So moving on to the sound impressions, I first used the D20 in a desktop environment. I used it as a DAC and a headphone amp combo. I used my uh, very sensitive FIO FA7 in-ear monitors and uh, the background was really black and uh, very silent and I'm glad that uh, D20 is completely noiseless and uh, free of any harm and can be e easily used with any in-ear monitors uh, with no sound degradation so that is pretty cool. Uh, I am told that this is their second revision so uh, with much lower headphone output impedance on the headphone out. out. No numbers, I, uh, I'm sorry I don't have them, but uh, it works well with my near monitors and I think uh, it has a very low output impedance. With my FA7 from FIO I uh, started recognizing that velvet sound uh, the AKM chips uh, come with, as the sound was very impressive, uh, have a very good flow and uh, natural tone that the usual uh, Delta Sigma chips are dreaming about and uh, not having. Uh, D20 is slightly on the warmer side, um, natural side of things, with rounded frequency response, with no particular uh, emphasis on any frequency area. So uh, with IMs it sounds uh, deeper than I, I custom to and um, have a really nice holography. Uh, the sounds are like flying a longer distance before reaching me and uh, create an impression of iriness and uh, breathable sound. So the sound stage is, uh, in my opinion, wider than usual. It's wider than a normal solid state amplifier, uh, for sure. Okay, so uh, switching to the full-size headphones. Um, things are getting uh, more interesting as I was comfortable driving my uh, Sennheiser A660 at about 28 volume and my Quadira 1 at about uh, 33 volume out of uh, 40 maximum. Uh, for harder to drive headphones, D20 could be a problem as uh, it do doesn't provide a lot, of, uh, a lot of amplification. In absolute terms, it doesn't have the balls and authority of heavier um, and much more powerful designs, but uh, that was uh, quite expected. The slam is also not the best and probably the biggest drawback of the D20. Uh, because uh, the heavy drum will not have uh, this uh, hard uh, hit uh, in, in the eardrum and uh, the double drums will, will sound a bit subdued and a bit lighter. Uh, as with IEMs, I think uh, using full-size headphones revealed an impressive depth and a very good holography levels. I think that is surpri surprising, especially at this price level. Uh, it can be had at around $270. Uh, sound stage size this time around is medium sized, so not as big as with uh, in ear monitors. A sign, I think it's a sign that uh, amplification is reaching uh, the, the high limit. Uh, however, D20 will never sound uh, crowded, will never sound close, uh, closed in, and um, even with big cans, uh, that will not happen. Um, 
the same seductive and velvety and inviting character will uh, was heard also on the big hands and uh, an emphasis on musicality and uh, the flow and less uh, much less on ultimate technical aspects uh, like crazy detail or uh, sharp bass or sharp treble uh, d20 is not catching my attention with uh, detail retrieval or transparency levels and uh, more with its uh, flow and natural sound somehow um, in the long run i think d20 is uh, quite easy to listen it will not throw a crazy transient or sharp outlines of the notes and it will always be fatigue free with few high dynamic range tracks, uh, mostly classical pieces, uh, volume wise I was maxed and was still craving for just a little bit more volume and I wish uh, D20 will have a little bit more power but for that purpose LOX-G is uh, offering a very affordable P20 tube based headphone amp for harder to drive headphones. So far the biggest uh, con and the biggest drawback of D20 is the headphone amp section. There is one thing that also needs to be said, uh, at maximum volume the noise levels are staying very safe and D20 is not going into clipping, so no popping sound, no annoying, no annoying noises at maximum volume, I think that is pretty cool. Ok, so uh, the second part I used uh, the D20 uh, in my stereo system with my speakers you see in the back, the KEF LS50 wireless. My active uh, Kev speakers are also having a high resolution DAC inside, and, uh, but they can be connected to external DAC uh, such as this one. And this is exactly what I did. Uh, sound wise I think uh, D20 again shown its glorious uh, velvet like sound and easy to, uh, easy to like performance. With uh, smoother transients and uh, liquid notes. Um, the biggest surprise for me um, with my speakers uh, that you see in the back was um, how deep it sounded compared to its integrated DAC in the speakers. Uh, the sounds were like coming uh, from behind the speakers, uh, it was uh, behind the wall even. It was a bit weird in the first place uh, but uh, pleasant a little bit uh, later. Sound stage is again uh, larger than usual and somehow uh, quite airy, focusing on a single note from a crowded track is even easier to do than with uh, uh, on speakers than with headphones, so uh, uh, D20 is doing that with such an ease, it's almost uh, mesmerizing. In terms of frequency response, uh, D20 will, um, is offering a rounded presentation with a slight roll off in the sub bass and uh, in the upper treble for a very natural performance. So I think the mid-range is the only part where D20 really really shines and will throw the mid-tones a bit forward uh, most of the time. So vocals are really nice, uh, centered and very very present. Um, this is not uh, really surprising for me since uh, AKM chips are basically kings in the mid-range department uh, with lifelike audio performance across the board. Uh, treble I think it's uh, quite clear and very present but never overbearing and harsh so um, lower and mid treble uh, are really fine. Only the upper treble I think is having uh, what I call a natural roll off. Uh, starting with 16 kHz and uh, up it starts to decline smoothly. In terms of detail retrieval I think D20 is good but not impressive and doesn't hold a candle to the ESS technologies uh, DAC chips, especially the second generation. And um, as those will offer uh, more micro details and will have uh, better transparency levels. Ok guys, so this is it, I hope you enjoyed my review. Uh, my full in-depth review can be read at my website, I will put a link in the description below. Stay strong and I see you next time. Bye-bye. Cheers.